For this lesson we're going to continue our look at transformations in uh, quadratic relations and this is really going to be putting all of them together and in particular we're going to be focusing on doing these transformations from an equation that is already in vertex form and uh, we're also going to look at what those transformations are going to result in on the graphs. <clears throat> A quick recap of some th topics that we've looked at before. The A value which is the coefficient that multiplies, in this case it multiplies outside of the bracket when you're in vertex form, that's going to tell us two of our possible transformations. It's going to tell us whether or not there's a vertical reflection. If it's positive, there's no vertical reflection. If it's negative, then there is a vertical reflection. It will also tell us whether or not there's any vertical scaling. If the magnitude of A and the way we say that, if the absolute value or the magnitude of A is greater than 1, that means we have a stretch. If the absolute value of A is less than 1, which implies that it's between 0 and 1, then we have a compression. Moving along, we inside the bracket, we have the X minus H, and H could be a positive number or a negative number. So this could say x minus something or x plus something. In that case, the h value is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And that is the same thing as a horizontal shift. Remember that the vertex is going to start at the position 0, 0 for the parent function. So if the x-coordinate moves, for example, if the x-coordinate is now 5, that means you moved from 0 to 5. That's a shift to the right by 5. And same thing, if the x-coordinate is at negative 2, that's a shift to the left by 2. And then outside of the bracket, we have this constant on its own. That's the k-value. That's going to tell us the y-coordinate of the vertex. Inside the bracket, we have to worry about the sign. The signs are actually opposite. Outside of the bracket, the signs are what we would expect. So a positive number means up, a negative number means down. Whereas when we're inside the bracket, a positive number actually means left and a negative number means right. And so we're going to see that as we work through some examples. And just a final note at the end here, when you are coming up with your transformations, when you're processing transformations, always read from left to right and always apply them from left to right. So we're not actually applying bed mass here. We're not applying order of operations. You're just going to trust me when I say this. We're going to read our operations from left to right, so we would process the transformations from A, then from H, then from K. All right, so let's move on. Now, if we want to graph this, there's three ways that we can graph a quadratic relation. And again, right now we are assuming we have a quadratic relation in vertex form. So it's going to look like that. You can always use a table of values. We have done this in this course, and I'm sure you've done it in previous courses. If possible, try to choose your x values for your table of values around the axis of symmetry. That's not always possible. Sometimes you're just guessing, in which case you may have to add some additional x values to make things work out. Then you calculate your y values and plot those points. Another way we can do this is we can read our transformations, determine what they are in the correct order. That means we're reading from left to right. And then we apply those transformations to some of the key points from the parent function. And what do I mean by key points from the parent function? Well, the parent function of a parabola is pretty easy to graph. There's a point here at 0, 0. There's a point here at 1, 1 and there's a point here at 2, 4. And then you have the same reflected points on the other side. So this one is negative 1, 1, this one is negative 2, 4. So those are what I mean by key points. So you could transform those key points and find the new points. We'll do one example looking like that. And then the way that I think is the preferred way, simply because I think in the end it's actually the easiest way, is determine the location of the vertex. That's coming from your values for h and k. Determine your step pattern as compared to y equals x squared. 
y equals x squared always has the step pattern 1, 3, 5, etc. So you can determine your new step pattern. Then you plot this vertex and you apply your new step pattern. You also want to make sure you can incorporate a vertical reflection into your new step pattern. You can just make these numbers negative or you can just keep this in mind and, and decide whether or not you have to vertically flip over the parabola. And we're going to do at least one example of graphing that way, probably more. Okay, so first example. So we want to graph this by transforming some points from y equals x squared. So first of all, let me go ahead and graph those points just to remind you, let's see what kind of scale do I want here. I'm going to make it a pretty small scale because I'm not sure what my graph is going to look like. So I'm just going to set it on a square scale and everything's going to be equal to 1. So this would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 on the x and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 on the y. So here is my parent parabola, y equals x squared. And we've got some points here and I'll get those in a moment. Before I get those, let's look at the transformations. We read this from left to right. So the first thing I encounter is positive, so that's no transformation then 2. So my first transformation is a vertical stretch. By 2. My second transformation is inside the bracket here. It's x minus 3, but we know when we're inside the bracket the sign is opposite to what you'd expect. So that means it is a horizontal shift so normally we would associate a negative with going left but because this is opposite this is going to be a shift to the right by three and then here it's outside the bracket so now it's what we would expect negative if what would we normally associate with a negative number that would be down and so that's correct here so that's going to be a vertical shift down by 4. Okay, now let's talk about what I mean by transforming points from y equals x squared. Here's y equals x squared. And so let's talk about transforming points. Well, let's pick this point, 0, 0. And let's look at this transformation, vertical stretch by 2. So what does a vertical stretch by 2 affect? Does that affect the x-coordinate or does that affect the y-coordinate? Well, that's a vertical stretch. So a vertical stretch is going to affect the y-coordinate. It's not going to affect the x-coordinate. The x has to do with horizontal. The y has to do with vertical. So when we say that we use the transformations to modify the points, what happens to the point 0, 0 when we apply transformation number 1? That's a vertical stretch by 2. That means take the y coordinate and multiply it by 2. Now in this case, 0, 0, the x coordinate stays the same at 0. And what is 0 times 2? Well, that's still 0. So, no change. Transformation number 2. Does transformation number 2 affect the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? Well, it is a horizontal shift. So that means it's going to be shift right by 3. Let me actually add one more thing in here. So what I did is I took the y-coordinate times 2. That's what this vertical stretch by 2 means. A horizontal shift right by 3, that affects the x-coordinate, and it means add 3 to the x-coordinate. So this next one is going to be x plus 3. So the x-coordinate is currently 0. 
add 3 to that, it becomes 3, and the y coordinate doesn't change for this one. And then my third transformation is a vertical shift down by 4. So vertical, that means the y coordinate, and down by 4 means subtract 4. So my transformation here is going to be y minus 4. The x coordinate will be unaffected by this, it stays at 3. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So the new location of the vertex, 0, 0, has moved to 3, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's my first point. Okay, now let's speed this up a little bit. So let's take the point 1, 1. I'm not going to, I've got these things written here, I'm just going to line things up underneath. So I take the y coordinate times 2, so that becomes 1, 2. I take the x coordinate plus 3, that becomes 4, 2. And then I take the y coordinate and I subtract 4, that becomes 4, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 4 negative 2 is right here. My next point, that would be this one on the original, that's the point 2, 4. Okay, so what happens? The y coordinate times 2, that goes to 2, 8. The x coordinate plus 3, that becomes 5, 8. And the y coordinate minus 4, that becomes 5, 4. 5, positive 4. That's right there. I have, over here I have x equals negative 1, y equals 1. Multiply the y coordinate by 2, that becomes negative 1, 2. Add 3 to the x coordinate, negative 1 becomes positive 2. And shift the y value down by 4, or subtract 4, that becomes 2, negative 2. 2, negative 2. And the last one, which is up here, it's this point, which is at negative 2, positive 4. And it becomes negative 2, and we double, multiply by 2, that becomes 8. Then we shift to the right by 3, negative 2 becomes positive 1, 8. And then we subtract 4 from the y coordinate, that becomes 1, 4. 1, 4 is right there. Now, if you were paying attention, you might have noticed once you had the first three points, you could have used symmetry, just like we did before. The axis of symmetry would have gone through the transformed vertex. So here is my transformed parabola. You can see, obviously, the vertex has moved from here to here. And this new parabola is a little bit skinnier than the other one, and that's because of this vertical stretch. Now that can be quite time consuming, but it will get you to an answer, and if this works for you, then you should use this. If, if you like the way this works in, the, in your thinking, then go ahead and use that. Let's take a look at another option when we're doing this, using the vertex and the step pattern. So. When we talk about using the vertex, the first thing that to recognize there is that in the parent, the vertex is starts at 0, 0, and the vertex is going to switch based on, this is it, assuming we're in vertex form, this is the new location of the vertex is going to be given by these two values. This value is going to have an opposite sign, so this positive 2 yields a negative 2, and this negative 3 stays negative 3. So my new vertex is at the point negative 2, negative 3. I'm not going to draw the original this time, I'm just going to put on the transformed one. Now, what about the step pattern? For the parent, 
the step pattern is one, three, five, seven. So what is the step pattern going to be for the transformed function? Well, what does this do? I'm taking each step and I'm multiplying it by negative 0.5 or negative a half. So I'm multiplying each of those by negative one half. If you don't like the negative part, you can just try to remember that it's been vertically reflected. That works as well. So when I do that, one times negative a half is negative a half. This one, three times negative a half is negative three halves negative five halves, negative seven halves. So I better put a scale on here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And so now here we are at negative two, negative three. And then my step pattern is going downwards because it's negative. So it's over one, down a half. So I'm going to be part way in between there. And then it's over one, down three halves. One, two, three halves. And then it's over one, down five halves. Over one, down one, two, three, four, five halves. And going the other way, going left one, down a half. Going left one, down one, two, three halves. Left one, down one, two, three, four, five halves. And there is my transformed graph. Now I don't know about you, but I think that using the moved vertex, the transformed vertex, and then the step pattern, that was a lot quicker and easier than doing all of those individual transformations on those points. However, it one being quicker and one being easier, that doesn't have a lot of value unless you get the right answers. So when it comes down to it, you need to pick the one that's more reliable for you. Okay, so I have a bunch of additional examples here. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but I think I'll go through one or two more. And the big thing here is to be able to pick out the vertex. So what is the vertex in this case? It's going to be positive five, this changes sign, and four. And what is the step pattern going to be? And if you need to, of course, you can always write out the step pattern of the parent function first. So that's going to be one, three, five, seven, and so on. And then, so what is this one doing to that step pattern? It's just flipping it over. So this becomes negative one, negative three, negative five, etc. So I find 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. There is my vertex at 5, 4. And now my step pattern is over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1, 2, 3. Over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And because of symmetry, when I go left, down one, those line up horizontally, and then over one more, down three, over one more, down five. And there is the graph of my transformed parabola. For this one, my vertex, actually this one's very similar to what we had before. The vertex is in a different location. But the step pattern used to be 1, 3, 5, 7. And now it's being multiplied by, we did a negative half. This one's positive a half. So this 1 becomes 1 half. 3 becomes 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves, and so on. I'm not going to bother graphing this one. Let's just put the vertex on there. Negative 3, negative 8, 2, 
four, six, eight. And then this parabola is going to be opening upwards because it's positive in front. The vertex on this one is at six, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four. So there's the vertex. It's going to be opening downward because of this negative. The step pattern, one, three, five, seven is going to be doubled and negative. So 1 becomes negative 2, 3 becomes negative 6, 5 becomes negative 10, and so on. So over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2, 4, 6, and over 1, down 10 doesn't fit. Left 1, down 2, left 1, down 2, 4, 6, and then 10 doesn't fit. And so there we have our transformed parabola. And just to, I'll put on the contrast here. Here is the parent function, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 3, 5. And then by symmetry, and you can see this is a slightly wider parabola than the blue one. So this one is the parent function y equals x squared. So this one has been stretched vertically. Obviously it's been reflected. It's also been stretched vertically so it's a little bit narrower than this red one. Okay I think that's it unless we've got a particularly interesting example here. Just fill in the vertex negative 5, negative 2 and the change in the step pattern is multiplied by 3. So 1, 3, 5, 7 becomes 3, 9, 15, 21, and so on. This one has a vertex of 4, 5. The step pattern has been flipped over. So it's going to be negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 7. No stretch here, just a reflection. Okay, and that's it for this lesson. I know I skipped over some of those examples, but um, I didn't see a lot of value in doing each one of those in such detail.